off with Giordano, two on one. Michael Backlund shoots, scores! Penny, great move. Here is Penny, Chad scores! Comes three to Shane. Rocked by Lucic, ran him over. And he wins it back to Foley, scores! No way! Oh my! No way! For Fiddler, backhand to Fiddler! Oh my! into overtime in Game 5, and McDavid scores! Game winner, series winner for Connor McDavid! I have been in the rebound for all my life, and I'll be Alberta bound until I die. Welcome back to the Two Months Podcast. We are presented by Shadified Salon and Barbershop in Edmonton, Alberta. And our guest is in Las Vegas. He is the uh, president of uh, N- NRX Hockey and RSG Hockey. He has uh, been on with us before. He is a uh, uh, hockey agent for uh, many great NHL players in the NHL and, uh, and an upcoming uh, player too. And Blake uh, Fiddler, a good friend of ours and uh, the Vernon Fiddler family. Uh, we uh, have Elaine Waugh joining us. Uh, Elaine, how's it going? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, it's good to have you back. It's been it's been a while. Last time we did this, we did it in person, uh, so that was pretty cool. This was uh, in the uh, World Junior uh, kind of little bubble bubble seeds yeah. in there that they kind of had or whatever in, in August. But uh, how are things with you? Obviously, uh, you're in Vegas. The draft is going to be there pretty soon here. And are you pretty excited to what you have in store for your uh, your clients and getting drafted and and anything else going? draft wise too it should be yeah i mean it's uh it's exciting to have it in vegas shortest commute in my history for the draft i got about a 12 mile drive to uh to the uh, sphere so i'm pretty excited about that yeah Uh, not so excited about the 110 degree heat that uh you're having right now (laughs) yeah it's it's hot it's hot but uh, i've I've warned everybody else in the nhl to uh bring their shorts and the bathing suit because it's it's gonna be a hot one but no, it should be it should be great for the city. Uh, this is supposedly our last in person draft, uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how we go how we proceed. It sounds like we're going to go NFL NBA style, which uh, should be interesting. Yeah, and uh, NHL uh, staff members will end up staying in their own cities going forward and basically doing it, you know, via Zoom. The the yeah. the the new preferred matter of a communication <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, it, it is uh, an interesting and exciting week coming up. Uh, we got that. We got free agency. It's a big draft for us. Numbers, like numbers wise, I think on central scouting, our agency had about 27 ranked players. So uh, that's, uh, that's going to be a, a busy draft for us, which should be good. A lot of families want to come in to Vegas because it's Vegas and yeah, the, uh, it, it makes it a fun trip for the family too. Uh, sometimes it doesn't end up being a fun trip if you don't go on Saturday. So, this, so I'm hoping everybody gets picked. <laughs> yeah, so, is this the most you've ever had in the history of uh, of your you know time in being a president with uh, RSG Hockey? You know what? I, I, as far as ranked players, yes, we always average uh, somewhere around like I'd say you know 12 to 15 picks every year. So it'll probably end up maybe a little bit higher than that this year. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the company's grown. You know, we, we, we now have 12 full-time staff members. And uh, so that that's helpful too. Uh, you know, having more people on board to help manage the relationships. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the draft is always a roller coaster of emotions, right? It's uh, I, I tell these kids, we have a little luncheon before the first round and we kind of take them through what the weekend's going to be like. And we talk about how there's always good surprises and bad surprises. Yeah. And uh, that that's the only consistency about the draft is there's always stuff that happens. They don't expect. Yeah. So everybody has to, you know, and it's tough. Like uh, kids come in with, with large number of family members. Uh, they feel the pressure because they don't want to disappoint, but it's not in their control. It's completely out of their control. And, and, and that, that creates a very stressful environment. You know, the, as a parent, I've got kids you want the best for your kids. You see your kid, not his name, not getting called out. The stress builds up, uh, you know, so it is uh, it is a very uh, stressful weekend for everybody, no matter where you get picked. 
Yeah. So do you have everyone that works for RSG hockey with you at that point in the draft? And are they a big support system for, you know, families? Like obviously you're going to be there and we always see you on TV, like around the, your kind of players, but how much more of your staff, your staff, other agents, support staff would be there to kind of maybe shelter or have conversations if things maybe might've not have gone the way they first thought but they do go on later on, but are just there to kind of, you know, ease the conversation, let them know things are going to be okay. How does that process work with an agency or, or guess your agency, how that would work? Yeah, we, we do bring everybody in. So there'll be uh, 10 plus of our staff members here. Uh, and it, 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 it does help, especially if you have a lot of families and there's a lot of moving parts and, you know, and uh, teams sometimes want to meet either before or after, uh, or during the draft, so it's good to be able to kind of spread it, spread out, and and well, you know we are one of the agencies that that does work as a team, meaning that if you're an NRX RSG client, uh, everybody gets to kind of interact with you within the agency. It's not like okay, this is your player, and you just work with that player. Or we're one of the few agencies that do it this way, uh, and I like that aspect because uh, it just it just kind of helps everybody get a feel for the company as a whole. And everybody's got different personalities and, and different things that they're good at and maybe not as good at, right? So it's a, it's a good way for us to all play off of our strengths. And how? Like, and what, where did that come from? Like, obviously, you know, you have a great rapport in the National Hockey League with players, even throughout other agents, too. Um, was that just something that was very near and dear to your heart that you want to make sure that when we get going here and as we blossom this agency, this is a very important tool that we want to have a meeting. Everyone's involved. Everyone matters. It's we're all one big family here. It, it is a, a really uh, ingrained in our culture. And, uh, and as we've added some team members over the years, uh, you find out really quickly if they fit the culture or not. I'm a big culture guy. I, I really believe that you win or lose with culture. And, and if you if you build starting with that ingredient as the main ingredient, the rest will come. You know, the success will come. The you know the players will come. Uh, you, you'll come up with great ideas because you're you're working together. Uh, so that that part to me is is, is very very important. Uh, you know, and because hockey geographically is such a wide ranging sport, you can't be everywhere. Yeah. So if you can't trust your own, you know, teammate uh, within the agency to help you manage some of the players uh, when you're not physically there all the time, uh, then you probably can't play on our team. You yeah. know, that's, that's usually how, how it works out. It is such a great agency. Obviously it's something near and near to my heart. When we started this podcast five years ago, you, you joined us and being a guest and it was, uh, you know, something I, uh, you know, it was, it was awesome. Like, it was just like cool to kind of, you know, talk hockey with you and talk life with you. And I agree on culture and it's, uh, you know, someone that, you know, in the industry very well that you would deal with is in Brad tree living. And that's something that, you know, I loved about like about him and love about him is that it's culture. It's a culture thing to him. And, and, and I'm sure all uh, all GMs are great to deal with. You you deal with them well more than we ever would do on our end. But uh, it is pretty cool that you would start on that way. And um, you know, and over these years, Al, you've been you've you've created some really good relationships and added some really good people into the agency. Uh, you know, Eric Halla just is has been with you guys and just joining you guys in the last several years. And Brandon Dillon's uh, you know with you guys and. You know, you got you got great guys like Nico Heischer and Brent Burns and Jake Allen, like all these guys have been with you for a very long time. And some of them have been with you day one. And, you know, we have seen this transition period where some players are leaving agencies to come to other agencies. And I want to talk about Brandon Dillon here, and you know, pending UFA. We'll see what happens in the future as this next few weeks play out. But can you talk about the player, the person he is and the importance for a player like him in the playoffs? Obviously, you know, a, a gruesome injury to kind of end his playoffs and, but how maybe that recovery is going for him in terms of being ready to start next year. And mm -hmm. also, you know, how great of a player that is to work with and a person is to work with, with him too. Yeah. I mean, it, first of all, uh, unbelievable person, uh, a great human being, great dad, uh, you know, great husband. Like he, he's, he's just, he is exactly what you would expect him to be. You know, he's a, uh, he has all the right values. Um, uh, you, you asked about the chance too, right? So yeah, I mean, he, he's, uh, really honestly, cool. like he, he gets it. He, yeah. he gets that, uh, you know, it, we're all very fortunate to work in this sport. 
and and he gets how fortunate he is and and it's important for him to, to kind of give back and and really help some of the young guys understand that when they get in the league so he's definitely a great veteran to have around you asked about the injury uh you know the best test for his injury is he is golfing so there we so go everything, <laughs> so everything's good yeah uh it was it was a laceration there on the wrist and uh but yeah everything's back 100 percent uh full workouts all that good stuff so so that part is is all taken care of it's, it's unfortunate because i think they needed him at that time they did. it was kind of a freak uh accident right like a uh, one of those things that just happens in a game, but yeah, I, I mean, he brings, you know, he brings a lot of everything, uh, that you can't teach to a locker room, you know, and, and that is, uh, on the ice, he plays hard. Uh, he's, he's a pain to play against. Uh, and, uh, but he also put up his best offensive season of, of his career last year. So, uh, even, even more, uh, exciting for him. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he takes care of his body. Like nobody else I've seen before, you know, he probably stretches 90 minutes a day. <laughs> like he, yeah, he kind of goes overboard. on taking care of himself much like Brent Burns does, you know, like, uh, and those guys can, that's why they can go forever because they, they just, they take care of themselves. Uh, but yeah, he's, uh, you know, obviously he's, he's a UFA as of July one. Uh, we have not closed the door on Winnipeg. Uh, that's been a really good last few years for him in Winnipeg too. And obviously he had a career year this year. So uh, zero complaints there, yeah. uh, but you know, players earn the right to get to free agency and maybe see what else is out there. And uh, at, at this moment, that's the conversation we're having, but uh, July one's still a, w- a ways away. And uh, yeah, it, I mean, he's, he's an asset wherever he's going to be. Yeah. Uh, and, but I just like him so much as a person and what he brings to, uh, we just finished talking about culture what he brings to uh, the the drive and the the professionalism of a team, uh, I, I think to me is is like really like one of his major assets. Yeah, uh, talk about another great defenseman, and he signed a great ticket with the Penguins last year. And Ryan Graves, uh, you know, he's been with you for a while now. Can you talk about you know his success and you know how rewarding that was to kind of get that deal done for him and you know, the future he has, uh, you know, going forward here and just being one of those great solid uh, uh, left shot defensemen that this game has. Yeah. Another, another great guy, uh maritimer like myself. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and now, now it lives in the, in PI in the summer. He's a great example of, you know, why young players should, you know, always stay positive and, and not get kind of too, you know, too focused on what's going on around them, but basically on their own career. He got drafted at a pretty good junior career. Uh, got drafted to into an organization where he really wasn't going to get much of a chance. Uh, you know, it happened that, that Colorado had a player in a similar situation, similar draft pick, who also wasn't happy. They basically swapped the, the two players, uh, where they, it felt like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And then when when once he got to Colorado and somebody showed a little belief in him, he just took off. Right. Uh, so. You know, we often talk about, you know, how hard it is to make the NHL. I, I firmly believe it's the hardest pro league to make and stay in because you play so many games, it's so competitive, and it just keeps getting younger and faster uh, that, you know, sometimes guys just get lost in what's going on around them and I'm not getting a chance or there's, you know, I'm, I'm stuck in a dead end or I'm getting screwed. You know, those are those are the, converse, the conversations that we have a lot of times with players that we hear from the other side. and. Yes, you know, some of it is luck, being at the right place at the right time. Uh, but, you know, when when opportunity knocks, you have to perform. And I think that's where the guys who have the great focus, like like Brendan and, and Ryan, uh, really kind of shine through and they grab the opportunity, don't let go. Uh, because I, I do think, you know, there, there are too many, especially these younger generations, you know, with social media, there's a lot of people comparing themselves to people they shouldn't be comparing themselves to. And then they get caught up on that and then you lose your focus. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're behind the eight ball because you took your eye off the ball. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, you can control what you can control. And, and I think these type of players, they, they've been through adversity. You know, Brendan Dillon wasn't drafted. He's a 20 year old signee. Ryan Graves got drafted, felt like he was in a dead end, but he didn't sit there and complain. He worked his way through it. And eventually something opened up because he, he kept at it. Right. Yeah. But if you keep trying to change it or chase it, 
it, it's something that that really becomes a, a an issue for young players, and then they never find they they, they they can never grasp that opportunity because they're not ready for it when it shows up. Yeah, well, that's great advice. Like this year, I'm, uh, you know, as my with my work and the podcast, um, you know, I took on an assistant coaching role here in Edmonton with the Southside Athletic Club. So I'll be coaching the U17, uh, 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 triple U17 triple A's. And at some point, Al, I would love to get you to Edmonton. I know you do the uh, RSG hockey camps, but I'd love to kind of get you in front of some of these kids to, you know, speak to what you are already speaking to and talk about that culture. Um, sure. how important is it for those conversations to have, you know, in what the young players we have, you talked about it, it's young and it's fast. If you want to play in this game, you want to be successful in this game. It not there's, you could still be fast and be a veteran player too. And we've seen guys have their extend their careers longer, but it's not, it is somewhat of a young man's game, but you still need that veteran presence. But, um, any advice you would give to some of those kids that are going to listen to this interview and even some coaches and some parents in terms of that? Because some of the great conversations I had with you are the advice you can give, you know, parents and kids uh, that have been private conversations, but giving it a chance to be a little bit more public. What are the kind of the things that you would have uh, your in, in some of the things you guys talk about at the RSG uh, camps throughout the summer when you guys come to Edmonton and other cities too? Yeah, for, for us, I mean, number one is, is just, you know, creating good habits. You know, if you live like a pro uh, and and it becomes part of your daily routine of being a pro and living like that, eating like a pro, sleeping like a pro, making good decisions, you know, doing your best in school, all those things carry over to your career. Uh, then it becomes part of who you are. It's, you don't, it's not a thought, part of the thought process anymore. And I, I think that's a big, big one for us is, is trying to get these young players to create good habits early. Uh, but part of the bad habits is a lot of this kind of social media, lack of patience uh, from parents and, and, and players. Uh, and, you know, it's almost frustrating, but our business is getting younger and younger. We're, if you're 13 now and you're a top end player, you're probably talking to advisors or agents at that age, which to me is very, very young, you know, yeah. like, it's too young, but if we're not there, the other top six agencies are there, right? Uh, so, so it is a damn if you damn if you don't kind of situation. And then you'll see kids, you know, choose an advisor or an agent at thirteen, and by the time they're seventeen and getting drafted, they're on their third agent, right? And that's what does that say about character, society? Yeah. It's it's a little bit, you know, it, it, to me uh, that that part is a little bit discouraging. Uh, that a lot of people don't want to understand that the more adversity you face, the better you're going to be equipped to deal with it when you need it. Because you face adversity at 13 to 17, who like who cares, right? It's not going to change your life in a worse way. You don't make a team. You get cut from a trial. You don't get uh, invited to hockey camp or USA hockey camp. You know what? Like you're going to survive and you're going to get another much many more at bats to prove that you could play but you know the the parents and the adults that try to protect kids from adversity usually end up damaging them a lot more than just letting them you gotta let them fall once in a while you gotta let them scrape their knee and get back up and then next time they're going to be ready and then when they fall again they're going to get up quicker and then next time they won't fall then all of a sudden you know you start growing into you into who you can be as far as your potential goes but to me, that that is probably like as far as like parents and kids embrace adversity is probably my my best advice yeah. uh, because people are chasing it, you know, they, and chasing it. by what I mean by that is you have young players and their parents and they always want to play a level higher than probably the kids at. Right. Just because little Bobby across the street is playing at that level and he's the same age. So you should be there, too, because you're as good as him. And then I've seen so many young players potential being ruined by chasing it, never being the go-to guy and always being the guy that's trying to get ice time because you're playing a level above where you should be. Yeah. There's something to be said to being the man, having the puck on your stick, you know, being able to make plays and, and really being that person, that go-to person. You, you can't teach that. You have to go through that to learn it. And I think, I think it's really important for parents and kids to understand that. 
Well, that's great advice. Uh, in our, our head coach, Doug Ockenberg, he played pretty, uh, pretty high up. I don't know if you ever came across uh, Doug Ockenberg in your, in your travels at all, but, uh, um, you know, he's, he's done a great job coaching and he looks at the game the same way you do. And I know if you guys ever have a conversation, um, it would see eye to eye and it's very well said by you. Um, and I think it's true because like, there's a family I know, like their kid played year, a year, a couple of years ago, played like tier two house hockey and he had way more success, a lot more fun. But then this past year, um, you know, he was playing like, yeah, that community, um, you know, recreation kind of hockey. And then he went and played club hockey and then, you know, your whole season, you only have four wins and it's tough. Like it, and it, you get looked at differently. It's like you said, Jimmy across the street plays, you know, club hockey. I got to play club hockey. It's like, well, that doesn't necessarily have to be the story for you at that point. It can be down the road, but you know, at that point you get, you know, what, at what cost is it all for? Um, and I agree with facing adversity is, is a good thing going forward in life. Um, a few more before we get you out. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, we said the name Blake Fiddler at the top, uh, his first year in the Western Hockey League with the Oil Kings. As I say, you're already smiling. What a great kid. What a great family uh, this, this they have. Um, can you talk about Blake as a player and, you know, they're representing him and how much that means? And, you know, we know Vernon Fiddler very well. He's been on our podcast, grew up with him in the Mill Woods area here in Edmonton. But uh, the Fiddler family and Blake Fiddler too, uh, Al. Yeah, I, I, I mean – Great family. Uh, can't say enough about Blake. Uh, there's guys that you're proud to represent because of who they are, who they, yeah. you know, the person that they are. And I would say like, wow, this kid, he checks all the boxes, right? Like he's just, uh, he's a great young man, uh, you know, really believes in his faith, uh, you know, does all the right things, you know, off the ice, taking care of his body, making sure that, you know, he's going to, uh, achieve his potential, right? Like at the end of the day, you, you wake up with a purpose and uh, usually that takes care of who you want. If you know what your purpose is, clearly you wake up with that purpose every day. There's not a lot of thought process going on until like, okay, should I do this or that? You have your routine down path, right? So we, we just talked about, you know, living with pro habits. Uh, obviously he had a great role model in his dad and, you know, and that's, that makes things easier. Uh, because when you grow, grow up around the game, like Josh Doan is another client, right? And I mean, it, there's not a lot you can tell that kid that's like, okay, well, let me tell you what it's like to play pro hockey. You know, like they, they've they lived it. So uh, sometimes you just got to let them be who they are and, and support them. And they make our job a lot easier that way. So yeah, I can't say enough about the, the human being. And he's a great player, you know, yeah. and, and uh, this year was a big growth year for him. Uh, you know, being uh, a 16 year old in, in, uh, in the WHL, not easy. Uh, and he learned a lot, but you know what? I'm sure if you ask him, uh, he, he learned a lot because of the adversity. You yeah. know, he had some rough nights. Uh, he had some games where they, they probably didn't play that great and he didn't feel great about his game and, but he learned from it. Right. And and now like to me, when, when you go play major junior, pretty much any junior hockey, that 16 year old year is kind of like your gimme year, right? Like you, you shouldn't feel so much pressure, but it's so hard to find a coach that'll play young players that it's, it's kind of a trade-off, but that's the year where you, like I tell guys, like allow yourself mistakes. That's the year of growth because then that 17 year old year becomes your draft year. And that becomes a lot more pressurized and learn from your mistakes at 16 and don't forget them because that's how you're going to be a good 17 year old. And you talked about that. Well said by you. Great, great family. Uh, you know, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, Vernon Fiddler would know uh, Shane Dome very well and probably uh, Josh Dome very well, too. Um, we'll move over to talk about the Dome family there. And obviously a pretty great story, you know, obviously them going over to Utah, that organization, but uh, getting a chance to play you know, in the same city that his dad was not obviously the same rink, but wearing the same Jersey, um, you know, how special was that to kind of see on your end, but also to see it on his end too. Yeah. I, I was lucky enough to be there for, for that first game where we scored the two goals and uh, what a night, you know, like in the family, so the guy taking off the shirt. Out? No, <laughs> no, no, that was, that would not be me. <laughs> that was his uncle. Who's yeah. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh yeah, and I, I heard I hear he owns like a tire business back uh, in uh, Western Canada, so I think I think that helped his tire business. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, what you know, again, what what a, a humble, gracious family, and and just 
again, going back to what we talked about earlier, appreciating that we're lucky enough to be working in this sport. They get it, right? Like it's it's a privilege. And and if you treat it like a privilege, you know, he he really he really did, you know, like and and uh and now Josh is doing the same thing, doesn't take anything for granted, shows up and works hard every day, uh, never complains about his role. And uh and you know, I expect that he'll have a, a long, successful career, not just in hockey, but in life as a whole. Like those are all ingredients for success, no matter what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, two more before we get you out. Uh, we have a fan question here from Phil Stockley and his, his question is how does it work for a player that signs an entry level deal? Um, say he plays eight games or nine games, but then gets sent back to junior. Does he still get compensated for those eight games knowing that it doesn't burn a year off his entry level deal? How does that kind of that process work? I don't know if I would have. Yeah. That right. So, so when you're in the NHL, yes, you, you get your NHL pay. You know, so they break it down per day. So if a guy's making, you know, 850, uh, you divide it by probably 185 days in, in most seasons. And then that's how much you would make per day that you're there for those eight or nine games. Then when you get sent back down, if you have, haven't played your 10th game, it hasn't kicked in your So your contract slides again. Um, and actually, we, we kind of went through that with uh, Max Contois, where we thought Anaheim was going to send him back down, but they let him play his 10th game and then sent him back down. So they burnt a year which was kind of a weird, weird move. Uh, but yeah, that, that is how it works. Okay. All right. And then the uh, last one here, uh, another uh, a question from Phil was just, uh, you know, with all the trades kind of going on lately, uh, you know, just the last few days, especially today, as we record this on Wednesday, um, you know, how busy it is, how busy is it for you on your end of things right now? Or are you fielding a lot of calls more than you would normally field? Or is, is it just kind of, kind of wait till the cup finals over and that's when maybe the real kind of busyness and chaos could could possibly happen no i i think you know you know once you get to the combine which was uh almost two weeks ago now in buffalo uh then teams start kind of getting into their war room and figuring out okay what are we going to do with our restricted guys where do we have holes who's probably going to be out there and we kind of do the same on our end where we we try to feel out the market like what are you guys going to be looking for uh so you know, uh, obviously, uh, you got to be prepared for yeah. July one. Very prepared. So I'm a big charts guy, and and like I, I keep notes on everybody, and uh, just to, to know that what you're looking at because it happens very quickly. Free agency, uh, you got it. You got to have a pretty good feel for who's going to be looking for what and who you're calling first, basically. Yeah, and so the cap going up four million, and is the escrow going to be capped at six percent this year, Al, or is it correct? Yeah, we're still at six percent this year, and then uh, you know it's it's going to be interesting because uh, this CBA expires uh, twenty six, so we got two more years, and then uh, and we're we're maybe at it again, or maybe we just extend it. We'll we'll see what happens, right? Yeah, and and are you pretty happy to see the cap go up finally and further going up more? Is that kind the of the ironic part is all the agents like myself are super happy to see it going, but when you talk to the teams, it's like they're living in denial. Yeah, it's not <laughs> happening. Yeah, 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 we're not, we're not. The cap's not going up. What are you talking about? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that's the same argument over and over again. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's always a fun battle to have. So, um, Al, thank you for joining us uh, this evening. No really, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, you know, this, what's your thoughts, I guess, at the end, what's your thoughts of this cup final? I know uh, Anthony Stolar's on one end there. and Ah, you know. man, I mean, uh, Florida opened the door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a long trip back to Edmonton. So, I, yeah, that's going to be a really interesting one to see. Uh, you know, I, I thought, okay, if it's not over after game four, it's going to be over after game five. And and honestly, Florida came out flying yeah. yesterday. They just couldn't capitalize on it. Uh, Skinner, to his credit, came up big when he needed to, and now it's a whole different ball game. Like, a, and I mean, man, can Connor ever take over a game? Like, a, it's it's crazy how good he is, right? So, I, I still, you know, I still think probably Florida pulls it off because it's tough to win four in a row. But you, know, you just never know, you know. Like, you they just need Bob to kind of feel better again, and and I mean, to his to his defense, he's got to be getting a little tired. I mean, yeah. he's played a lot of hockey, so it's going to be uh, really interesting. Yeah, yeah and, and I'd love to come back on your show at some point. Uh, we're working on a really cool mental health initiative. Okay. That's uh, something that nobody else is doing in the uh, in the hockey world. So uh, once we have that kind of launched and and ready to go, I'll give you a heads up, and we can uh, really chat about the. It's it's more to kind of support our athletes on the mental health side. 
I would uh, definitely look forward to that. Uh, mental health advocate of my own here and uh you know we've had Ron McLean Kelly Rudy on with us and done some podcasts like that before so uh I would love to to hear about that and uh you know and again whenever we can get you back on it's a pleasure and maybe when you're back here in Edmonton you got some time you can kind of meet our hockey team here too and talk to those kids and talk to those yeah. parents to uh you know kind of get uh you know your name out the name out there more and understanding kind of that and um, like you say, it's crazy. You get represented at 13 years old, but like you said, if you're not doing it, there's six other <laughs> seven other agencies doing it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but all the best to you. Looking forward to uh, you know the, a successful draft for RSG Hockey and and uh, and also uh, free agency too. I know I'll be busy, so uh, thank you so much again, Al. It means a lot to us. Thanks for having me on. All right, buddy. You have a great night. You too. Right. We interrupt the Too Much podcast to bring you some breaking news. Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right. They are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a fresh shave to a beard trim, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shape your signature beard look. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using code 2MUTS for 20% off and free shipping. Listen, I'm a real lazy guy. I hate shaving every day. Ask my wife. I leave thousands and thousands of little stubble in the sink. It's time to tame your mane. No one likes a weird beard. Say goodbye to all your stubble trouble with Manscaped's Pro Beard Kit. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This thing is a juggernaut of fixing faces. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. That's right. Face grooming does not need to be hard. Get 20 different beard lengths in just one guard. Plus it's waterproof. So you can please your wife and shave in the shower to avoid all that hair in the sink. The titanium coated T-blade is tough on hair but smooth on your face leading to single stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. This kit does not end there though. They have created four dermatologist tested formulations for your post trim care. First, beard shampoo and conditioner, then beard oil and finally beard balm. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free gifts. A beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code 2 Muts at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code 2 Muts. Manscaped. Beard Hedger. One stroke. One guard. 20 lengths. When you hire a contractor, you want things to go smooth. Smooth as a driveway poured by Pete's Concrete. You want a solid guarantee. Solid as a basement floor by Pete's Concrete. You want Pete. Pete's Concrete. For sidewalks, patios, your leaky basement, Pete lays his reputation down with every job. And he offers you finishes and colors you won't find anywhere else. You want someone who proudly puts their name on the work they do. Pete puts his name in concrete. Pete's Concrete. 